Oh, I used to do coding 20 years ago. Well, it has changed a lot. I used to do SEO 10 years ago. I know how this works. No, you don't know how it works because it has changed a lot. So if this is not your full-time job, find an expert and listen to their advice. Hello everybody, welcome to Search. This week we will talk about big commerce SEO and content marketing and the strategies that go along with it. Now, Joe, we are an elite certified partner with big commerce. We have a lot of clients. We do a lot of dev, a lot of planning, a lot of strategy, and we also do a lot of marketing. And SEO is a big part of that because mm -hmm. I always say SEO is the sweetest money that you will ever make because it will keep going up and up and up. And if you invest it right, and if you build your content hierarchy and your structure, you're going to make millions of dollars. And we have clients who make millions of dollars with a minimal investment of $5,000 a month on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And they just make more and more and more money. Now, talk to us about what's important about the big commerce platform uh, when you are doing SEO or content marketing. What are the different functionalities or the features that you like mm -hmm. of big commerce that helps us execute an SEO project a lot more efficiently? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really like big commerce when it comes to SEO because it seems like their team internally really understands SEO. And, and a lot of the questions that as they were building out new functionalities and rolling out new functionalities, a lot of the questions that we had asked as marketers and SEOs, they really took into consideration and implemented a lot of these features onto their platform. So for example, we know that content is extremely important when it comes to SEO and content marketing. Um, and for e-commerce specifically, you're going to have your blog that's standard, you know, every single e-commerce platform out there has one. But now when it comes to driving that middle of the funnel traffic, we really want to focus on optimizing these product category pages. Now, traditionally, a lot of these e-commerce stores give you one option to put a category description. Now that category description, by default is gonna live above your product listings, which again, if you insert too much copy, too much text, it's gonna push your product listings really far down below the fold, which we know that that makes for a poor user experience. What BigCommerce has actually done in some of their more recent builds is they've actually built what's called containers. Now, some templates have containers, some templates don't, typically the newer uh, templates Stencil. that are that are coming out now all have these containers, which now allow you to place the majority of that category description content that you're going after some semantic terms as well as reinforcing your primary down below the product listings. And with this strategy, I mean, we've seen huge, huge results in terms of traffic and visibilities for very competitive terms. You know, just to give you an example, one of our clients that sells office furniture, right? The title of this category, the title of this page is boardroom tables, right? We know that a semantic term for boardroom tables are conference room tables. So how are we going to inject content onto this page to also reinforce that semantic? We implemented the strategy on that category page by reinforcing that semantic term below the fold. And now for both conference room tables and boardroom tables, this client is ranking on page one right? Within positions one through four. I think one's ranking position two, the other one's ranking position four, right? So again, very, very powerful um, in terms of SEO and content marketing. And that's one thing from a functionality standpoint that I really love that BigCommerce did. We can talk about all the technical stuff that BigCommerce has, like the sitemap functionality that they have and mm -hmm. a couple of other add-ons. But let's talk more about strategy now. Um, we have seen in the past few months, we've seen a lot of Google updates in the past few months. And we have seen that um, there are many different uh, intent-oriented uh, changes that Google has made as well. So if I am searching for, let's say, boardroom tables, I might get a lot of category pages and product pages on the first page of Google. Mm -hmm. But if I'm searching for, let's say, um, something more informational, like, you know, cataract, cataract issue on, with dogs or, or dog eye problems or eye issues, then I get more blog-related, mm -hmm. information-related results, right? Yep. Same e-commerce platform, but Google is preferring to a blog rank post. the blog post, the informational blog post Correct. that's a thousand words versus the category. So mm -hmm. I think that Google has gotten a lot better in identifying the intent of that search. If I say 
by cataract medicine or cataract medicine for dogs yeah. or even you know, cataract medicine for dogs is going to go to the information page. If I put buy, it's going to show me products yeah, and category pages. Yeah. Or if I say price, it's also going to send me the, to the category or product pages. Yeah. And a lot of e-commerce business owners don't understand this and they don't optimize their strategy take, to take into consideration, one, the content hierarchy and two, the intent. What have we been doing about this at Optimum 7 with my clients? Uh, yeah, so oh, hold on. <laughs> with your clients? <laughs> what have we been doing at Optimum 7 about this with our clients? So it, it comes down to the strategy, right? We know that there are going to be some informative searches that their users are going to use throughout the purchasing journey. Very, very top level, top funnel traffic that needs to be driven that is going to be those informative pieces that again are not going to lead directly to a direct conversion uh, per se in, in the short term. Uh, however, what you're doing is you're now funneling in that traffic, you're building awareness, you're establishing authority within that industry. So when it does come time to make that purchase decision, let's say that individual doesn't remember your name, but now they type in a buy term, you're now going to show case product. Uh, and you're, you're going to land them on, on a category page or maybe sometimes even a product page, depending on how specific their search is. Um, so it's really an overarching strategy when it comes to content on big commerce. Uh, again, recognizing what the search intent is and therefore what type of page that content needs to live on, whether it's going to be a blog post driving top funnel traffic that is then going to try pushing those individuals further down the funnel, either through retargeting or having specific calls to action on that blog post, directing them to a specific product, or again, having more of that middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel content that's going to serve more of that buy intent uh, for the user that's coming directly in off of search. Got it. And the last thing I want to um, mention or ask you is about um, some prospects and clients coming to us and say, well, we're doing great with SEO. We don't have to do anything else. Or I don't want to spend money on AdWords or Google shopping is a waste of money uh, or Facebook retargeting. My clients don't buy on Facebook. We don't get conversions on Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what I say to them. And then you can tell me what you'll say to them. What I say is bullshit. Uh, it, it's the dumbest thing that we have heard. If you think that in this day and age where um, consumers are consuming content in different platforms, if you think that you should not be on Facebook, if you think that Facebook doesn't convert or LinkedIn doesn't convert and you've tried it all, with all the respect, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You need to be there because if your consumers are on TikTok, you need to be on TikTok. If you're, if you're, clients are, if your customers are on Facebook, you need to be on Facebook. Um, average user, and we've been saying this for, for mm -hmm. almost a year now, average user needs 26 brand touch points to do business with you. Mm -hmm. How are you going to fulfill those 26 brand touch points? You're not going to fulfill all of them on your SEO. It's very unlikely that they search 26 times and every single time you're on first page for those results for a related category or keyword. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to make sure that you allocate a budget and you nail down your awareness, engagement and conversion campaigns um, along with a nurture process. Absolutely. Right. What do you say to that on top of that? Yeah. Job? Well, so I would and, and these typically these responses typically come from the more B2B oriented e-commerce uh, stores that we see on big commerce. Um, they say my audience is not on not on uh, Facebook. So what I tell them is I say, okay, well, how about this? Let me install your Facebook pixel on your site. Let's give it about 90 days, right? After those 90 days, I'm going to go into the back end of Facebook and I'm going to create an audience based off of all those users that visited your site. So you can actually see how many people you can be retargeting on Facebook that quote unquote, you said, do not go to your site, do not shop from your site. Right. So the data is there and it's very easy to prove these business owners wrong because we can implement that tracking code that, again, doesn't cost any money to do. You don't actually have to run any campaigns or, you know, put down a credit card for ad spend with Facebook. We will show you the potential audience size and customers from the tracking code alone. So what Joe said is exactly right. Um, and, and here is what I'll, the last thing I'll add on top of that, Joe, is if you're a business owner and you're working with an expert, it could be a development expert, it could be a, an e-commerce expert, a marketing expert, a consultant. Listen to them, 
you know, don't pretend like you know everything. And uh, if you used to do SEO 15 years ago, this is technology, it changes. You know, we get these requests and it's really, really frustrating. But at the same time, frustrating, not from our standpoint, but we're frustrated for the prospect or for the client. Uh, we get these requests. Oh, I used to do coding 20 years ago. Well, it has changed a lot. I used to do SEO 10 years ago. I know how this works. No, you don't know how it works because it has changed a lot. So if this is not your full-time job, find an expert and listen to their advice and don't question it every step of the way. Ask, ask the right questions, do your due diligence, speak to referrals, but don't question it every step of the way because that execution is actually going to cost you more money because you're having the experts spend more time explaining you something instead of doing it. Um, with that being said, that's it for this week. The rent is over. We'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>